want to ask you guys to think about the last time you were dealing with a really challenging problem, right? Something you're really stuck on, you're working it through, and then you start kind of figuring it out, and you figure it out, and it starts to click, and you get that, and you're like, oh, yeah, and you get that, like, hell yeah type of feeling, like that euphoria of, like, you finally solved it. That is the love the really great data products build. They bring that out in people, right? So when you have something that's really amazing where you help them solve that problem, it makes folks really excited. And so what I'd like to talk today a little bit about is how do we actually, how do we create that, right? How do we create data products that customers really love? And I'd say there's two really important factors that we need to consider as the builders of data products that go into this. So first and foremost, we have to have the right focus. And we'll talk a lot more about what that means. <clears throat> and we need to have well-executed handoffs. And this part, I think, is, is one of the most overlooked aspects of building data products. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the goal of this talk, by, we're going to introduce a framework, and we're going to go through some tips for how to build really great data products. This talk's for you if, you're at a, if your company builds data products or incorporates data into your products, um, if you're a data practitioner. And if that's not you, I'm pretty curious about your own curiosity. Come say hi and tell me why you're here, because I'd love to know. Um, but yeah, so uh, after some intros, we're going to clarify a few terms, and then really going to focus on these three core data products. There are three types of data products, I should say talk about the framework, and then how to ensure that we're building really great products. Um, this is the abbreviated Lightning Talk version. Uh, you have the full version up on here. Feel free to, uh, I'll be putting it up there. You can download it from there. Uh, so hi, I'm Rick or Ricky. Either one works. Uh, my pronouns are he and him. I'm currently Senior Vice President of Data at Intera.ai, um, but I've been working in data for nearly two decades, and I spent the last 10 years or so building data teams and building data products. Um, and prior to then, I was head of data strategy and insights at a company called The Farmer's Dog. If you saw the Super Bowl this year, you saw that really amazing commercial that won all the beautiful awards. Absolutely in love with everything that's happening there. Uh, before that, I was uh, head of data at Vidya. It was acquired by Gamma and The Orchard acquired by Sony. At The Orchard, we were an early adapter of a small little database company called Snowflake. Uh, we put together the Looker Snowflake stack and helped make that thing happen. Um, so let's clarify a few terms because these are important. Uh, the thing on the left is not the same thing as the thing on the right. Uh, they sound very similar. They look very similar. They are very different. Managing data as a product is not the same as data product management. Managing data as a product is giving data the respect it deserves, managing those actual assets. At least that's what it is to me. Data product management is about solving problems for your customers, and you happen to be doing so by use of data. So um, first of all, what are the, who are these customers of data products? If you're putting data right into a front-end tool, customers are accessing it through charts or graphs, numbers, what have you. That's pretty simple. It's the folks on the other end of that. But it's also your internal customers as well. So your partner, oops, I'm going the wrong way. Your partners in finance, marketing, supply chain operations, all those folks. Um, but I'd love to answer the, this really important question, right? What is data's purpose? Why do we have data council? Why are we all here? Why, why do we work in this industry, right? And I'd say at the heart of it, right, data is there to help us move on to something else where they are unblocking a decision that we cannot get through. We're stuck and data helps us get unstuck, right? And I think that is its core purpose. It gets us unstuck from something that's actually really challenging. Um, and so, you know, a lot of folks say, oh, data is about outcomes. Many, right? At the end of the day, I think everything's about outcomes, right? Why do you work in supply chain? Oh, it's about outcomes, right? It's always about outcomes, but how do you actually get there? Um, and for me, it's decisions and actions, right? So data leads to decisions, decisions lead to actions, actions lead to outcomes. Um, topic for another discussion is, is there really a difference between decisions and actions? I would say that there's no such thing as a decision if there's not an action following it. Um, you know, it, I would, would love to have that discussion. I don't actually know that, but... I use the term decisive action to essentially capture both of those terms together, because to me, they're one and the same. Uh, I heard before that music and dancing are really one and the same as well, but I like that, decisive actions. Um, so how does data actually impact outcomes? Two core ways, better decision quality, faster time to decisions. Right. So I have the opportunity to make a choice between A, B, C, and D. On my own, I would have chosen C, because I think that's a great choice. I look at the data, and I realize, oh, option B is actually a much better choice. All right, I'm going to do that. So I'm making a better decision because I now have data. Or conversely, I'm at, or, or similarly, I'm able to actually make that same decision even faster. Right? So I would have reached the conclusion on my own, but because I have data, I'm able to get there faster or with more confidence, so I actually get to action a lot faster. This is super important. Data does not produce outcomes itself. It is a humbling thought, but 
Um, and from one point of view, I'm stating the obvious, but this becomes really important later on, right? We have to really understand and embrace this idea that there is no value in data itself, right? And we need to actually have some other part that comes with it afterwards. <clears throat> so let's talk about data products. Um, I would argue that there's really only three kinds of data products. Um, and this is not about categorizing things like uh, in taxonomy or, or what have you. This is about in understanding what, your data, what product you're building, you can really focus in on what is the right way to build it, what is the right product to build, right? So I'd say data, sol data products solve one of three problems. Problem number three, and I, I have a little bit of a hierarchy over here, but problem number three is our data needs to be accessed and managed. Data lives over here, people and systems are over here. We either need to bring the data to the people or we need to build a road from the people and the systems to the data. Whatever it is, we need to somehow put those things together. And then we need to govern it and we need to manage it. We need to know how to actually use it and what does it mean and all these other aspects that are really, really important. Right? And so we're managing the, the connections between the data, the access data, and we need to make it faster. And then it grows and we need to make it scale and then it gets expensive, so then we need to manage costs. There's a whole lot that goes into this. These are all the, the access and management problems. <clears throat> But then we have data that doesn't even exist yet, right? Either we failed to observe it when we could have observed it, or we can't observe it because it's in the future and it hasn't happened yet. Or we can't observe it because it's latent and we can't directly observe it. Emotions is one of my favorite data points, right? How do you actually put data into, a, how do you put emotions into a database? <clears throat> and so we need to create data that doesn't exist. This has classically been called data science, um, but I think it's really about creating data. Oops, skipping through very fast, I'm sorry about that. And then the number one problem we're solving with data is this. Decisions are really hard to make. Right? I would say that if we had perfect information and we knew where we wanted to get to, decisions would be incredibly easy to make. Right? You, could take, you know exactly what's going to happen. You know exactly what, you, what your outcomes you want. Decisions become easy. Decisions only become hard because there's a lack of information, because we don't know everything we need to know to make that decision. So again, data products solve one of these three core things. So decisions are hard to make. We don't have the data we need. The data we have is hard to manage. Right? And from data, we get to decisions, we get to actions. That's how we get to outcomes. So if we know we want to build these products to help make these decisions easier to take, um, which are the right products to build? And I think of data as, as this, uh, I don't know where this idea came from, but this infinite Swiss army knife, right? Do you remember Swiss army knives? They used to have like, like just like four little things and they got like bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. But you could do anything with it, right? Someone comes to you and is like, oh, can, we, can you solve this problem with data? Yeah, of course you can, right? You can solve almost anything with infinite resources, infinite time. But when you have the constraints of reality, that becomes a lot more challenging. So you really need to figure out which are the right products to build. And so the most important thing, if you're going to be building a data product, is this. You really need to understand what are the decisions your customers are making. And it always has to be about this for anything you do in data, and even and maybe especially data engineering. Right? So meaning like it's a little bit harder in the sense that uh, from data engineering, we're way farther removed from the decisions, but still even in data engineering. Um, you know, work in real estate data at the moment. If you bring in, we're bringing in data, let's say once every three hours, right? What if we bring it in once every 24 hours or we bring it in once every hour? What does that do to the decision that we're making with that data, right? Is that important? Do we want need to switch to streaming data? Well, are you going to make better decisions by having instantaneous data, right? And, that, and you really have to go all the way from that chain of events from I have this data faster, earlier, better, what have you, to how does that change the decision I'm making with the data? Or not me, my customers who's ever making the decisions. Um, so this is a summary of the framework. There's a lot of important stuff here. Again, we'll, we'll put it up on the site. Um, a lot of core parts here about understanding the decision frequency, understanding how the data itself impacts the decision. Right? What decision would you make without the data? If you're going to make the exact same decision with or without the data, don't bother building that data product. Right? That's a re really important concept there. But I want to focus for right now just on these three things that we need to identify. So we need to identify the decisions, we need to identify the opportunities, and we need to identify the handoffs. How do you identify decision points? This is a little bit harder than it sounds, right? So we talk about, so I've been talking about focusing on decisions, focusing on decisions. It's actually not that easy. Um, but very obvious thing is you can ask. You won't always actually get those answers, right? Or you might get some of the answers, but not all of them. You can observe. That's actually the best, which is actually to be able to watch your customers do their job or do whatever it is that they do in their day. And you will actually see those decision points. And what do decision points look like? I would argue they look like inaction, 
right? So you look at somebody, anytime they get stuck, I would say there's an opportunity for a data product, right? Procrastination, I would argue, has nothing to do with time management. Procrastination is a lack of focus and a lack of clarity, both of which data can solve really, really well, right? And so if you watch someone work and you look at the things that they're not doing, that you know they want to be doing or should be doing, those are your opportunities for data products. And so you find the inaction and you find the decision points. And then the other thing is they'll actually come to you sometimes, right? Those problems will come to you, but they'll come to you as solutions. And someone will say, can you give me this report? Can you put this into your product? Can you add this feature? Yeah, of course we can. Can you help me understand a little bit more? What do you want to do with this? Oh, can you give me a chart that shows me a line graph like this? Sure, absolutely. A line graph's going to go like this, like this, like this, right? So when it goes like that, what decision are you going to do with it? If it goes like that, what decision are you going to do? You're going to be staring at this chart. What do you do afterwards? And really having those conversations with your customers. Oops. Um, yeah. And so that's identifying decisions, identifying opportunities. Um, oops, it's not going. There we go. Um, so again, we talked about improving decision quality, improving time to decisions, briefly talking about improving decision quality. Lots of questions you can ask about it. The one question I really want to focus everyone in on is this core question. What is preventing a better decision from happening today? And when you ask that question, you're going to get an answer. I promise you, you ask anyone making a decision, they'll give you a really simple answer. And what you should do is follow that question up with a very simple, great, what else? And they'll give you, you know, maybe something else. Keep asking, and what else? And what else? And what else? You ask that about 12, 13 times until they're like, no, that's it. You sure? Just wait. Show them. Write it all up on a board. Be like, anything else? And just sit there quietly. They'll come up with something else. And usually it's that last thing they come up with, which is the most important thing. right? And so just keep asking that. And that's where you identify the opportunities. So identify decisions, the opportunities. This one right here, um, I think, is probably the most overlooked one. And I will say handoffs is where data products go to die. I uh, had a wonderful conversation with, with Jeff uh, earlier this week about amazing data science models that did some really fantastic cutting edge stuff on the math side, got put, you know, got built up, sent to folks, nothing happened with them. They just sat on a shelf, right? Why do they sit on a shelf? Because we haven't figured out the handoffs, right? And we really need to identify. So we talked before about data having no inherent value. It's a very humbling feeling or hum humbling idea to realize that there is nothing that we do that inherently has value itself. The value is in connecting with other people. It is when we make those connections that the, hand, that the value happens. And so that's what we need to do. So we really need to identify who specifically is going to act. What do they know about it? Right? What are they expecting? What's their timeline? Right? I'm getting into this really, really deep. I don't have time to go, to go too deep into this right now. Anyone who wants to chat about this, this is probably one of the most important parts to actually getting a data product productionalized and being used. Right? Um, yeah, and the more details you get on this, like the more you identify about this before you start building, the better the thing you're going to build. So a few quick tips for building some really great products here. Um, first of all, front-end data products, they have two design processes. Recognizing that there are two different design processes and they're completely different and completely different skill sets will really help a ton here, right? Imagine, um, tons of analogies here, um, but really data design is like writing a book, product design is like publishing a book. Right? Very different skill sets. Similarly, you wouldn't have your cardiologist do your brain surgery. You wouldn't have your neurologist do your heart surgery. Right? You want to make sure that you have the right folks for the right type of design that you're doing. Um, but yeah, data design, telling the story, product design, interacting with the story. Both very, very important. Right? Not downplaying either of them, but they're very different skill sets. Um, another tip, make sure to take responsibility for our work getting used. This is the most important thing. We are responsible for our work getting used. I've talked to so many data practitioners, like, I'm going to give you the data. What you do with it, that's up to you. I say, no, I'm going to give you the data. I'm responsible to make sure you can use it, that you know how to use it, right? Sure, once I hand it off to you, I'm not going to crack a whip and make sure you're using it, but I'm going to make sure that I'm planning correctly at the beginning so that I know how you will use it once you receive it. Um, and then as far as data science, um, we could talk a whole, I give a whole talk just on this part alone, right? The biggest obstacle of data science is the sea of possibilities. You can do absolutely anything with it that will actually kill it because you could do anything with it. So I've implemented this, uh, what I call the two-day rule, sorry for the cheeky pun, right? But moving, a moving away from the can we do it to what can we do in two days. And what I mean by that is any single data science project that you're starting for the first time, absolutely time box it to as small of time as possible. 
So for me, that's two days, right? Like nothing should be done and like nothing sh should be planned that will take longer than two days. If you're already planning for it to take longer, it's going to keep creeping and creeping and creeping. So what can you get done in two days? Second iteration, third iteration, sure, give it like a month or two, right? But the first time, two days only. Um, also, this is really important. So I was talking to, to, to uh, John from the, the African uh, Data Foundation downstairs. Data is full of bias. Use it responsibly. Be aware of the bias in your data. Whatever you build is going to have that same bias. Make sure you're aware of that. Be responsible for that. Um, so to sum it up, why do data products fail? Uh, either the work was not sufficiently connected to customers' decisions, or the handoffs were not sufficiently understood and established. And so when you're planning a data product, anything you're building for the first time, whoops, the slides are a little bit messed up here, but I'd say success is directly proportional to how specifically we can answer these questions. And the more you can answer these questions ahead of time, the more likely your product will succeed, right? And get very detailed into these. Who, what decisions are going to be made specifically with this work? Who is going to take, off, take that handoff specifically? What are they going to do? How are they going to do it? What are they expecting from you? And what are they going to do afterwards? Whether it's a person or a system. Um, and that's about it. So yeah, you can grab the rest of this up here. And thank you very much.